Pest control operations involving the use of both diluted and concentrated pesticide chemicals are routinely performed at approximately 150 major Navy shore activities. The regular use, storage, and disposal of both large and small quantities of various types and formulations of pesticides at naval activities creates the possibility for spills to occur, which may contaminate personnel, work areas, and application sites, and which may cause adverse health effects and environmental damage. This film was produced by the Civil Engineering Laboratory, U.S. Naval Construction Battalion Center, Port Wyanemi, California in cooperation with the Naval Environmental Support Office, NISO, at the request of Naval Facilities Engineering Command, and is designed to provide guidance on the proper handling and cleanup of common types of pesticide spills. The NISO publication, Guidelines for Pesticide Spill Prevention and Cleanup, provides information on spill prevention, pre-spill planning, spill cleanup and decontamination, and post-spill procedures. Another NISO publication, the Hazardous Waste Disposal Guide, provides guidance on the handling and disposal of hazardous materials, including pesticides. Together, these two publications provide guidance and assistance in cleaning up spills and where spilled materials have been properly cleaned up, instructions on their proper disposal. There are 10 basic steps in the general procedure for cleanup of a pesticide spill. These are, one, discovery and identification, two, notification, three, secure the site, four, obtain the needed equipment, five, control the spill, six, clean up the spill, seven, decontaminate the site and equipment, eight, dispose of waste, nine, obtain environmental samples, and 10, document the spill episode. These basic steps should be followed regardless of the type of pesticide spill encountered. A forklift driver unloading a pallet of pesticide dust from a truck at a loading dock damages one bag. The forklift operator has had no formal training in the proper handling of pesticide spills but he realizes that environmental and health problems could occur if the spill is not properly handled. The forklift operator contacts the Navy on-scene coordinator, OSC, for the activity. The OSC designates a spill team to be dispatched to the site. These men will have been trained in spill control and cleanup procedures. At the spill site, the team leader and his assistant determine what equipment is necessary for cleaning up the spill. The spill team checks the ruptured bag and notes the product name, seven, and the active ingredient in the pesticide powder, in this case, carbaryl. If the team had been unfamiliar with the chemical in the pesticide dust, they could have obtained expert advice and assistance by calling the Chemical Transportation Emergency Center Chemtrek at telephone number 800-424-9300. However, in this case, it was not necessary. The team secures the area around the spill by marking off the area with cone markers to keep out unauthorized personnel. The spill team returns to the site with the proper equipment needed for cleanup. First, they put on respirators, gloves, and other safety equipment. Because the pesticide dust spreads in the wind, the team covers the spill area with a plastic tarp, securing it with weights. One team member slowly rolls the tarp back into the direction of the wind, while the other member gently uses a foxtail broom and dustpan to clean up the spilled material and place it in a plastic bag. If a strong breeze was blowing, it might even be necessary to construct a windbreak before rolling back the tarp and starting the cleanup procedure. Great care must be exercised to prevent the pesticide dust from becoming airborne. 
The forklift operator slowly raises the forklift clear of the spill. The dust on the prongs of the forklift and on the cement surface is carefully swept up and placed in the disposal bag. Now the ruptured bag of pesticide is carefully overpacked by placing it inside a plastic bag which is then sealed with tape. Pesticide dust spilled on other bags on the pallet is carefully swept up and placed in a disposal bag. Next, the bags contaminated on the exterior are removed from the pallet and placed in disposal bags and sealed with tape. Disposal bags containing contaminated and spilled material are now labeled. The label warns that these bags contain carbaryl pesticide for disposal only. The tarp is removed from the spill site, and since it too is now contaminated, it will be placed in a disposal bag. Chemical materials that degrade or neutralize the toxic effects of the pesticide are used in the cleanup process. First, the forklift is scrubbed with the decontaminant, in this case, lime. The lime is activated by using sparing amounts of water. After the forklift has been properly decontaminated, it is then backed out of the spill area. Lime is now sprinkled over the spilled dust on the surface. Additional water is added to activate the lime, raising the pH, which causes rapid degradation of the pesticide. Then, absorbent material, such as sawdust floor sweeping compound, sand, or an oil absorbent, is spread over the contaminated area. Absorbent material is added sparingly to effectively absorb the decontaminant, which has been thoroughly worked into the deck. Now the contaminated absorbent material is carefully swept up and shoveled into a disposal bag. The spill area has now been effectively decontaminated. The bags of contaminated absorbent are now properly sealed and labeled as to their contents. A warning label with skull and crossbones and the word poison is then affixed to the disposal bags. The brushes, dustpan, and other equipment used in the spill cleanup process are now decontaminated with a lime solution. The team cleans their boots with a lime solution and rinses them with water. Respirators, gloves, and uniforms are placed in bags for later cleanup or disposal. The spill team leader and his teammate pack up their decontaminated equipment and remove the cone markers blocking the area, which is now safe after being properly decontaminated. Even properly trained personnel can have pesticide accidents. Here, a pest control crew member accidentally causes a pesticide spill. This pest control crew has been properly trained for handling pesticide spill emergencies. The driver acts as the spill team leader. Their truck carries a spill cleanup kit containing all equipment and materials necessary for handling pesticide spills. It is important that spills be cleaned up quickly. Otherwise, the pavement, which is somewhat porous, will become contaminated with the pesticide, requiring removal of the pavement in order to prevent it from becoming a continuing health hazard to children, animals, or others. The properly trained pest control crew dons coveralls, boots, respirator, and gloves from their kit. An absorbent material, in this case a material similar to standard kitty litter, is used to encircle the spill area to prevent further spreading. The pesticide is identified as diazinone from the label on the sprayer. The sprayer is straightened up and tightened down to prevent further leakage. The crew now begins cleanup operations by sweeping the absorbent into the spilled pesticide. The crew uses their rubber boots to work the absorbent material into the concrete in order to maximize absorption of the spilled pesticide. The absorbent material has now absorbed most of the spilled pesticide and is swept up and shoveled into five gallon drums for disposal. 
The decontaminant used in each case will vary depending on the type of pesticide spill. In this case, a previously mixed sodium hydroxide solution is used and is now sprinkled over the spill area. The decontaminant is then thoroughly scrubbed into the concrete. The sodium hydroxide solution is poured over the contaminated sprayer and brushed over its exterior. After allowing sufficient time for the sodium hydroxide to react with the remaining pesticide, absorbent material is again spread over the contaminated area. Then the material is swept up and shoveled into containers for future disposal. The containers are properly labeled and identified as to their contents. These materials must be disposed of by delivery to a designated hazardous waste disposal site licensed to handle the materials involved. A thorough cleanup using sodium hydroxide is made by applying the liquid and brushing it over all equipment and boots, then rinsing with clean water. When they've picked up the warning markers and all their cleanup equipment, the team leaves the site. Pesticide leaking from a punctured barrel overwhelms this unsuspecting member of a pest control crew. A short time later, another crew member approaches the storage building. He does not see the worker, but is aware there has been a pesticide spill. He hurries away to report the spill. Had he been aware that a crew member was inside, overcome by toxic fumes and rushed in, he too may have been overcome. Urgent calls are placed to the fire department, medical unit, the Navy on-scene coordinator, and the engineering field division applied biologist. Emergency service crews, as well as a trained pesticide spill team, arrive on the scene. The spill team members don protective clothing, including self-contained breathing apparatus, necessary because of the high concentration of pesticide fumes. Entering the contaminated building, the team brings out the unconscious worker. They take note of the leaking drum of pesticide. The paramedic crew checks the vital signs of the unconscious worker, confers with a doctor by radio, and she is rushed to the hospital. First, the spill team spreads absorbent material around the spill area outside the building, then moves inside spreading absorbent material over all areas that have been contaminated. Outside, an earthen dam is built to prevent any further spreading of the pesticide. An attempt is made to pump out the contents of the damaged drum of malathion. However, the pump breaks and is removed. The screw cap is then inserted and tightened using a bung wrench. The spill team then improvises by carefully laying the leaking drum on its side with the puncture facing upward. The drum is then kept from rolling by placing a wrench between the drum and the floor. This procedure effectively stops the leak. A sodium hydroxide solution is liberally poured over the area and worked in with a push broom. The second barrel that was contaminated is washed and scrubbed with sodium hydroxide and returned to the storage area. Contaminated soil in front of the building is shoveled into barrels. These barrels will be sealed and labeled poison pesticide material for disposal only. This material will be consigned to an authorized hazardous waste hauler for shipment to a hazardous waste disposal site. A common bulb planter is used to obtain soil core samples from the spill area. The soil is then sifted to remove unwanted objects such as rocks and debris. It is then placed in a properly cleaned and labeled glass jar, which will be packed for shipment to a certified laboratory for analysis. The proper reporting and cleanup of pesticide spills is required by law. Failure to comply with these laws can carry heavy monetary penalties. 
The procedures described in this film and the referred to NISO publications serve as basic guidance for activity personnel in handling pesticide spill emergencies.